I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us today at the Azure Academy. Please click on our subscribe button so that you can help support the Azure Academy and leave us some comments below on questions you have or things that you're interested in so we can make that content for you. So today is going to be a slightly different kind of video. Uh, this is part of our migration series and you'll see why in a minute. And this is actually in a uh, preparation for Azure Migrate. So stay tuned for that. We got a pretty cool announcement for you coming up. So let's jump over to the Azure portal. And in the portal, we're gonna to go to all services and we're gonna go Quick Start Center. So the Quick Start Center is something that we've covered extensively in our governance series and we'll have that linked over here in the card. So you can go and check out that series if you have not. And I definitely recommend that because the governance series mostly has to do with this step here, the Azure Setup Guide. In the governance series, we've gone through these links here on the left to talk about each one of these different sections and each one of our videos in the governance series is based on this and the principles around which we have built the governance series and subsequently the setup guide in the Quick Start Center are built on the cloud adoption framework. Now to see all of the docs we have on the cloud adoption framework, you can go to our docs, which is docs.microsoft.com forward slash Azure, and then go to the architecture center, and down here is the link for the cloud adoption framework. Cloud adoption framework here basically involves steps around governance as well as migration. And this is where we define our strategy, create a plan based on that strategy, get ourselves prepped and ready and blueprints come into the picture here. And we'll be doing a, a blueprint video very soon on governance and the migration landing zones. So stay tuned for that. And then we do our actual migration steps and then we innovate. Now that we done our lift and shift to the cloud now we want to modernize our applications that that kind of concept so this is the basics of the cloud adoption framework with that concept in mind let's go back to the quick start center and now let's dig into the main event here that we're here for today and that would be the migration guide so we'll click open on that now as I said this is all in preparation for the Azure migrate video this is about how do we move to the cloud with confidence with a defined set of rules and principles like we saw here in the documentation. We want to build that strategy, come up with a plan based on that strategy, and then get ourselves ready for the move, do the move, and then innovate in the cloud. So that's the whole principle here. So we have uh, stuff here in the overview, when you should use this guide, uh, how you modernize and migrate your stuff. And we have here the five R's of rehost, refactor, rearchitect, rebuild, and replace. And this is all, again, in the cloud adoption framework. So then there are many reasons for doing your actual migrations and, and moving your things to the cloud. And some of that might be because you have legacy hardware or you have end of support issues uh, like server 2008 and SQL 2008 and also recently Windows 7 going out of support and moving to Windows Virtual Desktop as a way to continue extended support as well as reducing capital expenses, data centers, maybe your, your lease is up and you need to get out of your data center or your colo. These are all really good reasons to move to the cloud. So when we do, we need to understand our approach because that's part of our defining our strategy. And so our approach to moving into the cloud then has to be, okay, what are we moving? Why are we moving it? And then how are we going to move it? So we have links here for you to dig into the docs more on the cloud adoption framework to help you with the migration considerations. And then it's also really good to come up with a checklist for how to go through this planning strategy and then motion of migration. Now we come into the part where we're actually digging into the tool side of things. OK, so this would fall under the plan and the ready phase. And this is where we're going to talk a little bit about Azure Migration. And we're not going to take a whole lot of time here because we have several videos coming around Azure Migrate and the migration process. Suffice it to say, Azure Migrate is the native tool to Azure to help you perform all these migrations. So in the past, we have had the Azure Site Recovery tool to move your systems to the cloud. We still use that on the back end, but the front end is now going to be Azure Migrate. So when you need to move systems to the cloud, whether they be servers, databases, 
web apps. And, you know, as things go forward, we're going to be focusing all of those migration tasks around the Azure Migrate tool set. When you need to do disaster recovery, that's when we'll rely on Azure Site Recovery. So the phases of Azure Migrate is where we download and configure a appliance, do a discovery of what systems you have, create assessments based on that discovery, decide what we want to move, how we want to move it, and then we can actually perform the migration steps. And we'll get into more of that in our next few videos. Okay, so Azure Migrate V2, and this will work now equally in VMware, Hyper-V environments, and also there'll be tasks uh, that we'll have for physical environments as well as other clouds moving to Azure. And then we'll also have database migration, web app migration, and even data box solutions all built around Azure Migrate. Then one of the other things that's really big when it comes to the cloud is cost management. So understanding what is the total cost of ownership. And for that, we have a link down here to the calculator for total cost of ownership. I suggest that you go through this and understand what your current costs are. And this is not just limited to how many VMs am I running, how many processors, how much RAM, how many databases. And so you can make a good apples to apples comparison and Azure Migrate will help you to do all of that. And we will cover that in an upcoming video. And then once you have your assets identified, then it's right sizing them. That means that if you have a system that does end of the month processing, you need that system to be built and online and running 24 seven. But during the last week of the month, you need this thing to be a beast. Well, you can do that in the cloud, provision the system as a very low cost, low skew resource, and then scale it up when you need it to do heavy lifting or make it a virtual machine scale set so that it can scale out as well as scale up so you can meet either scenario. And then of course, once you're in the cloud, this is part of that ongoing innovation and management and governance. That's where we need to make sure everything is properly managed monitored. We're following all of our good cloud advisories, security center, backup, disaster recovery with the Azure Site Recovery tool. And then of course, at the end, if you need assistance, we have some links here for that involving opening support cases, reviewing support plans and more. So we've just breezed through this really quickly, but there's a lot of data in here that I suggest you go back and read as time allows, as well as the cloud adoption framework. So look for our next video, uh, to be covering Azure Migrate V2 and there'll be several videos for that as well as blueprints videos coming up for Azure governance following the cloud adoption framework and migrating and building landing zones in the cloud with Azure blueprints. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the Quick Start Center and the cloud adoption framework where we can define our strategies, create a plan, get ready to for that migration, perform that migration and then innovate in the cloud and make sure that everything is properly governed and and managed. Please click on that subscribe button. It really does help us at the Azure Academy to keep making videos for you. And speaking of which, we want to hear from you. Please give us some comments below so we can make the content that you are interested in. And we'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.